Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Um, I'd like to uh, begin by thanking all those members who signed my motion uh, to enable this debate to take place and to thank and advance everyone who will be contributing this afternoon. And of course, I, I bring this debate to the Chamber in recognition of St Andrew's Day um, on the 30th of November on Saturday. As the convener of the St Andrew's Day Cross Party Group, I think it is very important that we take this time as politicians on to reflect what St Andrew's Day means and more widely what being Scottish means to us in all senses of the term. Um, it is my normal practice in debates, presiding officer, to uh, generally speak from a few notes or bullet points and perhaps often from speaking later reflect on the comments that other members have made. However, I've taken a, a slightly different approach. I have the privilege of having a, a young man named Kyle from the United States who is interning for me as part of a, a university programme, as I know many other members are. So I was keen to get a sense of what Kyle's reflections would be of St Andrew's Day from the United States and as someone over here visiting Scotland. So much of what I say has uh, been prepared in conjunction with Kyle and um, is informed by some of his reflections and understandings of St Andrew's Day. So St Andrew's Day, as, as many know, is a, a day to celebrate the patron saint of Scotland, for which the holiday uh, derives its name. According to Catholic teachings, or Christian teachings more generally, St Andrew was born in Bethesda on the Sea of Galilee and served as one of Jesus' twelve disciples, along with his brother Simon Peter. Little is known about the life of St Andrew, but it is believed that he died while being bound to an X-shaped cross in Patras, Greece, which was the inspiration behind our beloved flag. It is unclear how St Andrew became our patron saint, as he never stepped foot in Scotland, um, but of course there are many different stories and traditions. Some sources say that King Angus in the 9th century had a dream about the aforementioned X-shaped cross before battle at a battle with England. However, he vowed that if he ever won against uh, the English in this particular battle, he would anoint St Andrew as Scotland's patron saint. Um, as fortune hand, had it, King Angus won, and the rest is history. Beyond the distinctly scriptural definition of this holiday, St Andrew's Day is celebration of what it means to be Scottish. Now, as it's been suggested to me, to many around the world, Scotland is symbolised by magnificent bends covered in powdery snow, highland cows with majestic manes, expansive locks that may or may not contain certain mythical creatures, whisky that warms the soul, and, as Kyle put it, kilted men on street corners playing bagpipes with varying levels of success. In recent years, Scotland is also associated with a certain wizard with a scar of a lightning bolt upon his forehead who learns his craft at a school set in the Scottish Highlands. However, it was interesting what Kyle reflected here. To be truly Scottish, however, one must embrace the unique spirit of Scotland. He says, I think anyone who visits Scotland will quickly be struck by the compassion of the Scottish people, the kindness that is just built into Scottish society, helping others when they are in need, even if we ourselves are down on our luck. To be Scottish also means to be inclusive of others. If the makeup of this parliament isn't proof enough, with five different party leaders representing the different viewpoints of the Scottish people, Kyle said, I don't know what is. And he notes furthermore that it was not long ago nearly all of the parties were led by women in this chamber, and for half the party leaders were members of the LGBT community, suggesting that this is unheard of anywhere else, and something that we can be very proud of, presiding officer. It is in this spirit that St Andrew's Day fittingly coincides with Fair Saturday. Now, Fair Saturday, for those who aren't aware, is to some extent the polar opposite of Black Friday, which takes place tomorrow. Black Friday marks the peak of consumerism, with people around the world capitalising on sharp discounts to mark the start of the Christmas season. To counteract this rush of consumerism, Fair Saturday is a worldwide movement to give to charity by participating in a variety of community and cultural activities. And I am delighted to see that 32 communities around Scotland are participating in Fair Saturday across all our local authorities. And some of the many events around Scotland include plays, arts and crafts, film screenings, live music, and of course, local St Andrew's Day festivals. 
In support of Fair Saturday for Stirling Office, I would like to take a few moments to highlight some of the events happening in my constituency of Renfisher South. The first I would like to highlight is the Office Scottish Winter Wonderland in Barhead. This annual event features live Christmas music, pony rides, the Santa Express train, a fireworks display, and opportunities to take pictures with Santa himself. Entrance to the event is free of charge, but there is a small donation request to have photos taken with Santa, and all of those proceeds go towards making Christmas dinner parks for families who are less fortunate in East Renfrewshire. Second event I'd like to mention is Johnston's Christmas Light Switch On. During this event, there will be a host of local bands playing on the centre stage. At 5pm, the music will stop for the lighting of the Christmas tree, followed by more Christmas-related events. And all of the proceeds from this event go to St Vincent's Hospice and Active Communities, an organisation that promotes physical activity and well-being across Renfrewshire. Excellent examples of people coming together in celebration of St Andrew's Day and Fair Saturday to benefit the local communities. The last point I, I wish to make, Presiding Officer, is further in this sort of genuine international spirit of St Andrew's Day, because it is not something, of course, is just limited to Scotland. As Kyle notes, organisations around the world are pre preserving and celebrating their Scottish heritage. One such place that displays exceptional Scottish spirit, spirit is in the state of Maine in the US, the home of Kyle. Now, his hometown is, and I am being trained on how to pronounce this correctly, but I will probably still get it wrong, is uh, Bangor, not Bangor, Bangor. Um, and Bangor in Maine is home to the Anna Highlanders, a pipe band that plays to raise money for the Anna Shriners Children's Hospital, which treats children with specialised care such as those with cleft palate, cerebral palsy and spina bifida. Additionally, Maine is home to St Andrew's Society, which hosts events such as the annual Highland Games and the Robert Burns Dinner to raise money for their scholarship fund, awarded to students studying subjects related to Scottish culture and heritage. In conclusion, President Officer, I would like to thank Kyle uh, for his contribution in, um, in helping me to prepare these remarks. I think it is uh, it's very uh, illustrative of the uh, international aspect of St Andrew's Day that when two individuals from different parts of the world can meet and within a few hours of discussion suddenly discover all these connections through St Andrew's Day, it does symbolise the way in which St Andrew's unifies not just the Scottish diaspora but can bind people from across the world together in those shared values and I very much look forward to hearing other members contributions throughout this debate and I'd also encourage all members to engage in their local communities over the weekend to celebrate Fair Saturday and St Andrew's Day. Thank you.